This is Dollar Collapse, your ringside seat for the global economic crisis. To get the full story, go to dollarcollapse.com. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz, and I'm here in beautiful Vancouver. It's cleared up. It's beautiful out. Really nice spring day. And we just finished up the Metal Investor Forum. I've got Jay Taylor with me and John Rubino, and we're going to discuss the show. Jay, it's great to see you. Thank you, Kerry. Good to see you. Hey, John, imagine this. We're like uh, together again so soon. Yeah, nice to meet face to face again, Kerry. As always. So, I, there are a lot of companies, Jay, that I never heard of at this conference. Um, does that send off alarm bells when you see that? No, I wouldn't say so because the, uh, these are, this is an exploration, a mine exploration conference, and by definition, the companies that are involved with exploration are not well known. You know, the major mining companies are not particularly good at finding new deposits uh, for various reasons. The, the companies that are really good at finding deposits are companies that are uh, that are able to think outside the box. So these uh, exploration companies, what's happened is that the majors no longer, they've subcontracted it out? Yeah, they really do, Kerry. And, and what happens is, I guess during really good boom times, uh, the major companies might do some exploration. They'll do exploration, uh, let's say, infill drilling and so forth to make sure they're mining good stuff. But in terms of discovering new deposits, the majors are not good at it. You know, any large entity tends to be more structured. And frankly, the companies, the large companies are looking at the next quarter. They're not looking down the road two, three, four, five years to build a major mining uh, project. They are not looking to discover them. In fact, what the majors do is look to the little companies like we've met this this weekend here at the conference, they are the ones that think outside the box, that have the venture capital to put the high-risk, high-return capital into the ground. And that's why I like the juniors, the the exploration companies, the little guys, because when they hit, the uh, returns are absolutely spectacular. So you can go and buy stock in a major mining company and get good returns in a bull market, but in a bear market, you know, you don't do that well. But the ones, the companies that really find the big deposits... Uh, are the little guys that are able to think outside of the box. So, John, uh, this is the first time you're here, and what was your take on all these companies? Was there one story that you found compelling uh, during the conference? Well, there were two or three. Novo, I think Novo Resources is the name of the company. Um is run by a guy with a great reputation in the field who has some really interesting properties. Uh, another one that, that Jay recommends is um, Klondike. It also has a really interesting property and, and is not too far from um, being able to produce some great numbers that might get the market excited. And then one more that I, I have a few thousand shares in, which is, doesn't amount to much because it's a, a very low price stock, is Columbus Gold. And they're a couple of years from, uh, from bringing a, a really impressive mine online, so it might be a boring couple of years, but they're also a takeout candidate. So it could be that uh, a big company swoops in, buys them out for 50% premium on any given day. So I'm willing to wait until that happens. Um, And I'll have some more names for you after I sit down and look through the brochures that I picked up and the notes that I took. All right. Well, we'll pick up later. Jay, one of the interesting things that I witnessed here at this conference is a new crop, if you will, of geologists who are looking at discoveries differently, looking at the geology differently, and coming up with new theories and finding new fields that were hitherto not believed uh, possible. Right. No, it's it's true. The, uh, the creative thinkers, as I mentioned, the junior mining companies, the little guys, tend to have people that think outside of the box, and that's because, well, that's by their nature. As I just explained, the majors usually are structured. Uh, they're conservative. They're afraid to take risks. They want to have next quarter's earnings as high as possible. And when you're doing exploration, it's expensive. You're putting drill holes in the ground. It's a crapshoot to a certain extent. Uh, They do the best they can with uh, IP and other sort of geophysical studies to uh, increase the odds of those drill holes being successful. But nonetheless, it's a high-risk game. So there are people, there are always creative thinkers out there. John mentioned Novo Resources, one of my favorites. 
is a company headed by Quentin Henning, who was a geologist for Newmont in the past. And Newmont uh, had him looking for the next Whitwaters Rand gold deposit. The Whitwaters Rand was the largest gold deposit ever in the in the history of humankind. About 35 or 40 percent of all the gold that's ever produced come out of the Wits. So Quentin is looking at northwestern Australia, and he believes he's found, certainly from a geological perspective, he's found the uh, a Whitwaters Rand like deposit. Uh, how much gold is there? Well, time will tell. But it's looking very, very positive. But the theory that directed him there was a creative theory about how the Whitwaters Rand was formed. And uh, yes, so it's creative thinking and the ability to think not the way you were trained to think necessarily, but to think in a different direction. And you're right about that. There are a lot of younger geologists uh, that are coming along that um, that along with new technologies are increasing the odds of, of successful drill results. Yeah, like hydrology and uh, using satellite um, sure. imaging and now even drones. Absolutely. Uh, drones are used and of course GP. The geologist uh, can go out on the uh, GPS. The geologist can go out on the ground and know precisely and be able to mark uh, where they are and what they've observed uh, when they're doing their uh, walking the outcrops and doing their surface geology, geological work. So we could be heading for like literally another golden age of gold mining, huh? Well, you know, that said, Kerry, you know, uh, the easy gold has been found. The easy minerals have been found in the past. Uh, the old timers just simply, when they found copper or gold or silver in the outcrops, they just started hammering away and taking it away. But that is, most of that is long gone. So we're finding some wonderful deposits in places like um, the Northwest Territories or the Yukon or places that were harder to get to. And and how, and it, but they have technologies now that allow you to peer deeper into the earth. A lot of times now, the kind of discoveries that are being made are under cover, like a till that were, uh, you know, rocks that were brought down by glaciers that covered up deposits in the past. Different kinds of uh, uh, IP surveys and so forth allow them to see rock structures that are hidden from the human eye that allow people, that allow explorationists to start putting drill holes down maybe 50 or 100 meters below the what would have at one time been the surface before the glaciers deposited uh, the till. So there's a lot of things going on, but no, it's not easy. It's becoming more and more difficult to find large deposits. And as a matter of fact, one of the reasons that I like the junior sector, the little guys, is that the majors can't replace the amount of ounces they're producing. So I like to focus on little companies that have the potential to find multi-million ounce deposits. These companies don't have the skill sets to put these projects into production, nor the capital to do it. But the big guys, the hungry big companies like the Gold Corps, the Newmonts, the Barracks, are drooling when they see these multi, multi-million multi ounce deposits that make economic sense. And that is where I think the sweet spot is. When they find these deposits, as they find these deposits, that's when John was talking about the 10-bagger potential. Now, let me just add that the 10-bagger potential maybe is in the share price. A lot of times, if the gold price doesn't behave, it goes down. You might have to wait for the next cycle before that particular deposit is put into production. So what I like to tell people is when you make a lot of money, when you see your stock going up a lot, take some profits off the table. Because what happens traditionally is companies will put millions of dollars in the ground to discover something. They might have made some great progress towards the discovery, but then the gold price heads south and they have to put it in a hold for another five years or whatever, or 10 years. And then later, someone will come along and take advantage of this 30, 40, 50 million dollar drill program and gain all the intelligence from that. So if you can find companies that can gain the intelligence from capital that was put in the ground in the last cycle, those are the ones a lot of times that have the great potential this time, this cycle, to really uh, to get over the finish line, to get over the goal line. And those are companies, I think, that have great prospects. Uh, interesting that uh, these companies just seem to come out of nowhere and then all of a sudden in our field they become household names and just looking they're all looking for that one edge and and it looks like some of the companies we saw here this weekend have really found it john you you expressed concern about being able to basically separate the real companies from the bs what do you think is uh, the best way to do that for you the investor well you can't do it on your own you know a regular investor is not going to fly down to brazil or someplace and and uh, walk around in the Amazon trying to figure out 
about whether a gold mine that's being created down there is a good idea. You can't do it. Um, so what you have to do, I on trusted experts, stayed for a long time, and who, who has a great sense and a good track record for finding companies that uh, that, that have legs, you know, that have staying power. Instead of just disappearing, they grow into bigger miners, so they get bought out of the profit or whatever. So you need somebody like that. Rick Rule is another person who, when he does an interview online, usually towards the end of the interview, they ask him for his favorite stocks. We'll give you three, you know? Take those three and look into them and then add them to your watch list or maybe buy them. That, you know, that's basically what I do. I listen to, you know, to the interviews done by the experts in the field and then I buy their favorite stocks. <laughs> and, and that's really all you can do if you're a non-expert because this is a really technical field in which everybody has a great story. So it's a lot of technology in that sense. Um, you and I can't figure out whether some optical networking company is going to be the one that dominates the field 20 years from now. Um, so if we're going to buy optical networking companies, we need some kind of expert advice. And in, in the gold mining sector, there's a handful of people who were, a lot of whom were at this conference, um, who are trustworthy and who spend their lives trying to figure this stuff out and have, who, uh, who have so much background knowledge that they can separate the wheat from the chaff. So that's the way to go. Don't try to do this yourself. Just rely on experts um, and follow their lead because that's really the only thing you can do if you're an individual investor without specific knowledge of the mining industry. Now, having said that, um, you shouldn't shy away from the mining industry because of um, you know your lack of expertise because some of these things are going to be just monstrous winners. Uh, let me give you an example of the formative experience that, uh, that maybe loved you Mining so it was a company called Glamis a decade and a half ago that um, I bought some based on the recommendation of a, a newsletter reader called Claude Cormier in Canada. Um, and I bought it at about 50 a share, a bunch of it. It went to three bucks. I sold it, thinking I was a genius because I doubled my money. But, but in the ensuing couple of years, it went to 40. So that's the kind of thing that happens with the junior miners that succeed. You find a few of those, and it's a life change financial experience. And so the people who are looking at junior miners right now should be thinking about the next glamorous. You, know, you want the thing that you get into when um, when it's fairly new, it hasn't reported huge numbers yet, it's got financing, but you know it's not real, really well known. And then you want to ride it while it produces bigger numbers and bigger numbers. Everybody gets excited and then somebody buys it out for some monstrous premium. Um, and you do that two or three times and that's really all the financial stuff you have to do in your lifetime. So. <laughs> yeah, I had a story like that with a, a little company called Qualcomm. I bought it at like $85 or $90. It went down 10%. I sold it, and then it proceeded to go up to about $850, $900 a share. It's always the ones that get away. So, Jay, you've been in this so long, and there's, there's scammers out there, even if they're not like, purely fraudulent. They're, they're pushing stocks, they're pushing companies that will never never have a line. No major is going to take it. Nobody's going to take it. How does your uh, BS detector, your fraud detector work? Well, first of all, I like that I like to know the management and to look at their, uh, at their backgrounds. I like companies that are headed by scientists, primarily. That doesn't mean that scientists are not are, are above approach always or that they're always clean but for the most part guys that have geological degrees or some sort of professional degree don't want to give that away with fraud so they are uh, they're, they're inclined to be more honest I think and and stick to the science and let me just say that mining is is more and more scientific all the time in the old days you just go with an axe and a shovel and pull stuff off the ground off the surface now just to find out where it is and then the metallurgical sciences and so forth so I like companies that are, if I detect that there's a, a promoter that's really calling the shots in a company and a junior, I'm not that interested. I'm not interested at all, in fact. I want to see companies that are headed by 
by scientists, essentially. Now, that's not to say that you can't have a non-scientist as a CEO, but I want a non-scientist as a CEO, who's a CEO to defer and to look to his scientists to make decisions in terms of the next drill, the next drilling project. For example, you could, um, you know, if you were a promoter and wanted to be dishonest, you could go out and find a sure hit intersection that would drive uh, unsuspecting and not uh, unknowledgeable people to buy the stock. You could really pump a stock. You know, you can find a, uh, a vertical structure and drill down that vertical structure and get a huge intersection of a high-grade gold. But that doesn't mean that there's anything economic there. And so there are people that have played those games in the past. They go out and buy or pump and dump. Uh, I like to know, I like managements that own the stock and put their own skin in the game. That's another measure. So I think, and, and then over time, though, if you've been in the business as long as I have, you start to learn who the scammers are, who the people are that are um, that are selling snake oil. Yeah, well, unfortunately, there's no shortage of them. Anyway, uh, guys, thanks so much for for this informal roundtable. Jay, uh, what's your site again? Uh, miningstocks.com and jtaylormedia.com, where I do a weekly radio show. All right. And uh, obviously, you find John Rubino, as everyone knows, at dollarcollapse.com. If you got any questions for either Jay or John, just uh, send an email to kl at kerrylutz.com. Uh, guys, thanks so much for talking with us. My pleasure. Thanks for listening to Dollar Collapse. For regular info and updates throughout the day, go to dollarcollapse.com. Much because it's a very low price stock is Columbus Gold, and they're a couple of years from uh, from bringing a, a really impressive mine online. So it might be a boring couple of years, but they're also a takeout candidate. So it could be that uh, a big company swoops in, buys them out for fifty percent premium on any given day. So I'm willing to wait until that happens, um, and I'll have some more names for you after I sit down and look through the brochures that I picked up and the notes that I took. All right, well we'll pick up later, Jay. One of the interesting things that I witnessed here at this conference is a new crop, if you will, of geologists who are looking at discoveries differently, looking at the geology differently, and coming up with new theories and finding new fields that were hitherto not believed uh, possible. Right. No, it's it's true. The, uh, the creative thinkers, as I mentioned, the junior mining companies, the little guys, tend to have people that think outside of the box, and that's because well, that's by their nature. As I just explained, the majors usually are structured. Uh, they're conservative. They're afraid to take risks. They want. This is Dollar Collapse, your ringside seat for the global economic crisis. To get the full story, go to dollarcollapse.com. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Carrie Lutz, and I'm here in beautiful Vancouver. It's cleared up. It's beautiful out. A really nice spring day. And we just finished up the Metal Investor Forum. I've got Jay Taylor with me and John Rubino, and we're going to discuss the show. Jay, it's great to see you. Thank you, Carrie. Good to see you. Hey, John, imagine this. We're like uh, together again so soon. Yeah, nice to meet face to face again, Jerry. As always. So I, there are a lot of companies, Jay, that I never heard of at this conference. Um, does that send off alarm bells when you see that? No, I wouldn't say so because the uh, these are this is an exploration, a mine exploration conference, and by definition, the companies that are going to have next quarter's earnings as high as possible. And when you're doing exploration, it's expensive. You're putting drill holes in the ground. It's a crapshoot to a certain extent. Uh, they do the best they can with uh, IP and other sort of geophysical studies to uh, increase the odds of those drill holes being successful. But nonetheless, it's a high-risk game. So there are people, there are all 
always creative thinkers out there. John mentioned Novo Resources, one of my favorites, is a company headed by Quentin Henning, who was a geologist for Newmont in the past. And Newmont uh, had him looking for the next Whitwaters Rand gold deposit. The Whitwaters Rand was the largest gold deposit ever in the in the history of humankind. About 35 or 40 percent of all the gold that's ever produced come out of the Wits. So Quentin is looking at northwestern Australia, and he believes he's found, certainly from a geological perspective, he's found the uh, a Whitwaters Rand like deposit. Uh, how much gold is there? Well, time will tell. But it's looking very, very positive. But the theory that directed him there, capital, to put the high risk, high return capital into the ground. And that's why I like the juniors, the, the exploration companies, the little guys, because when they hit, the uh, returns are absolutely spectacular. So you can go and buy stock in a major mining company and get good returns in a bull market. But in a bear market, you know, you don't do that well. But the ones, the companies that really find the big deposits uh, are the little guys that are able to think outside of the box. So, John, uh, this is the first time you're here. And what was your take on all these companies? Was there one story that you found compelling uh, during the conference? Well, there were two or three. Novo, I think Novo Resources is the name of the company. Um, is run by a guy with a great reputation in the field who has some really interesting properties. Uh, another one that, that Jay recommends is um, Klondike. It also has a really interesting property and, and is not too far from um, being able to produce some great numbers that might get the market excited. And then one more that I I have a um, few thousand shares in, which is, doesn't amount to involved with exploration, are not well-known companies. You know, the major mining companies are not particularly good at finding new deposits uh, for various reasons. The, the companies that are really good at finding deposits are companies that are uh, that are able to think outside the box. So these uh, exploration companies, what's happened is that the majors no longer station, they've subcontracted it out? Yeah, they really do, Kerry. And, and what happens is, I guess during really good boom times, uh, the major companies might do some exploration. They'll do exploration, uh, let's say, infill drilling and so forth to make sure they're mining good stuff. But in terms of discovering new deposits, the majors are not good at it. You know, any large entity tends to be more structured. And frankly, the companies, the large companies are looking at the next quarter. They're not looking down the road two, three, four, five years to build a major mining uh, project. They are not looking to discover them. In fact, what the majors do is look to the little companies like we've met this this weekend here at the conference. They are the ones that think outside the box, that have the venture.